Hello Aries and welcome to your July monthly forecast for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the key strands to look out for, particularly specific for your sign. Please stay with me, I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail each of the key influences which are going to be impacting on your prospects this July. So thank you for joining me as we come into this month. The sun is in your sector, the home, family, emotion. So where you live, how you live there and whom with could be something that you're working on. There's also the possibility that some kind of home improvement or change of residency is in the celestial works because Jupiter in your sign is feeding into a right angle with the sun for the first four or five days. But if you remember the new moon in Cancer on the 29th of June was also square uh, Jupiter. So this desire to improve where you live in some kind of way is going to be quite strong as you come into this month. Now your ruling planet Mars is in a very tasty conflict, can only use that word, with Pluto also right at the start of this month. And that points towards the potential for a little bit of a tussle or power battle in your professional situation. But once Mars, your ruler, moves on the 5th into the sign of Taurus, this is really going to help you to convert any recent ideas into something much more tangible. Now, we also have on the 5th Mercury speeding into the sign of Cancer, but it's a very quick transit. Usually Mercury takes 21 days to work through each sign. On this occasion, it's just two weeks and emerges on the 19th into Leo, your sister fire sign joined by the sun on the 22nd. So that's going to see a lot of impetus build up in your situation, but there is a complex full moon which occurs in Capricorn on the 13th and anything to do with balancing home and emotions will have to take into account any future plans you've got but the new moon which occurs in Leo on the 28th is really exciting I can't wait to tell you about that because it does forge a terrific angle with Jupiter so please stay with me whilst I share all these details if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast, if you do give me three pieces of birth data, of time, date and place, I can give you a life map that can guide you for the rest of your days. But also within my special package, you can get 30% off and a 12 month personal horoscope forecast. Please see the link below for more. And finally, I'm nearly there on that 100,000 mark on subscribers. Thank you so much if you have already. If you haven't, I'd be honored if you t tap or click on the bell notification symbol. But please stay with me for your in-depth Aries forecast. So Aries, your July forecast begins with the uh, beauty of that wonderful Cancer new moon pouring its energy into your situation. The reason this is potentially so vivid is the moon governs the sign of Cancer. So we could argue that the Cancer new moon is the best of the whole year in terms of evoking the spirit of the sign of Cancer. And for you, the fourth house where Cancer is located, very much in keeping with the basic tenets of the sign of Cancer, which is about protection, it's about nurture, it's about uh, uh, any kind of way in which we can improve our sense of security, whether it's physical or emotional. Because Jupiter fed in to that new moon and the new moon pours that energy in through the spine of this month, Jupiter in your sign is very much about enterprise. It's about getting on the front foot, showing people just how dynamic you can be. But because Mars and Pluto, the two rulers of Scorpio, are in conflict for the first four or five days of this month, continuing from the tangle they had at the end of June, there may be a situation that you are feeling a bit vulnerable about and it could be linked to your work. Perhaps someone's challenging an idea that you've got which is a bit more unique and perhaps it's really quite entrepreneurial, but you may have to 
uh, encounter or may experience some kind of resistance from someone who may not necessarily directly talk uh, to ex and explain what their, their resistance to your idea is, but you may feel that somehow or another they're holding you back somehow from going for what you really want to do. And that could create some tension. And because the sun is in the fourth house, you may be feeling a little bit more emotional and a little more sensitive than usual. Also, Mercury, the planet of communication, and Venus, the planet of relating, are in Gemini as this month begins. So for you, that gives you a desire to connect well to people you feel emotionally comfortable with. So there could be some kind of gathering at the start of this month, a barbecue if you're in the north, perhaps a dinner party if you're in the south of the world, and getting together with siblings or neighbours that you feel particularly at ease with could be something that really appeals to you. But we do have on the 5th that big change when your ruler Mars leaves your sign after a six week residency. What Mars has been doing over that period of time is giving you great support to be very much on uh, the look out for opportunities and a desire not to navel gaze too much but actually to take action which is very much in keeping with the qualities of your sign and of course because Jupiter has been very supportive right at the end of May they were in an exact conjunction and that was pretty close together for the first five days of June something you started then may start to shape up in a much more tangible way from the 5th as Mars uh, moves into the sign of Taurus. Now Mars can be about desire and it can be about instant gratification and the sign of Taurus can be about intimacy. So if you're in a happy relationship this could be an opportunity between you and yours to enjoy uh, some time together, especially good food and good wine, and that sensual magic can start to flow between you. If you're single, it may be someone who is a little bit earthier who could draw you to them, but also it's important with Taurus uh, influencing Mars that you're not guided too much by someone's financial position if you are getting to know somebody new. Just give it time to evolve. But I think any ideas you've had can start to shape up in a much more substantive way in the following six weeks. The fifth also sees Mercury uh, uh, making its way into Cancer. Now of course Mercury went through a retrograde in Gemini, went back into Taurus, back into Gemini in the middle of uh, June. So it moving into Cancer really sees it starting to gain traction and in fact it's a very swift transit, just two weeks. Mercury, to be honest, is not greatly at ease in the sign of Cancer because Mercury relies on precision but also clarity and the sign of Cancer is much more emotional. So it's important to watch that your thinking isn't too subjective in that following two weeks. However, in week two of this month, the Sun does forge a really enterprising angle with Uranus. And of course, Mars has moved into uh, Taurus and that's where Uranus has been full time since March the 7th, 2019. And for you, House 2 has made things perhaps a little bit changeable, but it's also given you the potential for opportunities. I think the sun being in the fourth house linking with Uranus could be that you could declutter your property and find if you sold off some stuff, it might be more valuable, bit of a surprise. It could be that uh, there could be a quick development around where you live. Say, for example, if you've renovated or painted a property and want to move on somewhere else, uh, that could happen swiftly, and maybe the financial aspects of that can be more pleasing than you imagine. But that brings us to the full moon in the worldly sign of Capricorn on the 13th. And that is in a quincunx from the sun, not the moon, to uh, Saturn, the planet of restriction, which for you is very much about your future hopes, it's about your friendships. Some kind of balancing between your home needs, which is what the Sun and Mercury are asking you to focus on, and how you're interacting with the world, the Moon and Pluto, 
could be needed. And because Saturn's in the mix, um, maybe someone uh, that you're fond of socially doesn't quite get some of the demands that you're having to deal with at this particular time. Maybe some of your hopes are good for the here and now, but you're not sure if they're going to be sustainable for the longer term. Just to reassure you, Neptune, the planet of instinct, is in a brilliant angle with Saturn all through this month. So the implication of that is that if you listen to your instincts, I think that will step by step guide you in the right direction for your longer term, which Saturn is influencing is in its residency in the sign of Aquarius. Now on the 18th, Venus plays catch up with uh, the Sun and Mercury and glides into Cancer. I rather like Venus here. Um, it's going to bring out the more empathetic side of your nature. And if you are someone who's a very good listener, I think that could be something that people really appreciate about you in the following few weeks. But on the 19th, as I mentioned before, Mercury followed by the Sun on the 22nd, they really speed up, get into Leo, and this is when you can really start to enjoy yourself because Although Venus could see you focused on some decorative improvements or even just catching up with the family, I think the angle, uh, the uh, arrival, sorry, of Mercury and the Sun in the sign of Leo, which of course the Sun is governed, uh, governs the sign of Leo, so it's coming home, is really going to give you a lot more enthusiasm, a lot more desire to, to be outgoing. And that's a part of your nature. But because of this fourth house energy, which is so to the fore at the start of the month, just getting the foundations, the home or emotional or family stuff really working smoothly for you may just deflect you from the more social elements of life. But the opportunity to mix and mingle is definitely improved in the last 10 days of this month. And we also have a glorious new moon on the 28th because it does combine with Jupiter. Now ironically on the same day Jupiter goes into a retrograde in the sign of Aries. Now Jupiter retrograde can be very impactful. We need to think for you that Jupiter is in your own sign so that's about your individual manifesting your individual plans and ideas. The Sun's in the fifth house of pleasures I think generally when the Sun and Jupiter are collaborating like they are here in a trine, this gives you colossal amounts of support to really go for it. You know, listen to your gut feeling, one of your great strengths, and be very motivated to grab life with both hands. It's just in the last five days of this month, Mars does align with Uranus. So something very quick can happen around your financial situation. You could be more impulsive, splash out on something, or it could be that you're going to come up with a very ingenious idea that's very different. The sun's angle with Uranus in week two can also help you to think outside the box, but because the sun's in the more guarded, uh, security orientated sign of cancer, it may be that you're thinking about how you can be more imaginative about something to do with the home. But I think later in the month as Mars and Uranus combine with the Sun in the fifth house and forging that amazing link with Jupiter despite its retrograde, I think this is an opportunity for you to be very, uh, very much on the ball, make a, a snap decision that could just pay off superbly well. Now what about the retrograde? Well, Jupiter retrograde is something to definitely be mindful of. And of course, this year it's going to be rewinding back into the sign of Pisces again, which for you is house 12. So something you're trying to move forwards with, you just need to be sure of what the psychological, emotional or spiritual motivations for that is. If you are, I feel that you can still make progress, particularly on the back of this new moon, which is going to give you an awful lot of support right into the end of August, to be honest. So I wouldn't get too uh, caught up in worrying about the Jupiter retrograde. I think the link with the new moon is so glorious. Just really appreciate that opportunity. 
and you know, with Mars and Uranus so closely together, that could even be a connection of a romantic kind where suddenly, you know, someone's in your cosmic uh, 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 universe that really grabs your attention. Your pulse is racing and things could get quite steamy quite quickly. So very exciting. But if you are needing to be a little bit more cautious with your resources, what Uranus is pushing us all to do is to be more inventive, more thrifty, uh, craftier really about how we make the money we've got stretch that little bit further and just really economize in a way which actually gives us a real sense of satisfaction. And some of the things that we think or thought that we needed that you know we thought we couldn't get by without, they could make way and we actually get a bit more earthy about things, but I think your fun side really comes to the fore as this month comes to a close. Have a great July, take care and goodbye.